this borders primarily and fundamental on governance because 2571 of the 92 constitution spells out exactly what has to be done in the protection of public lands to the extent that it is vested in the president mm -hmm. for and on behalf of the people and including the natural resources on or beneath public lands. But then again, we see a number of times continuously these cases of the sale of public lands that brings up a lot more questions and a matter of concern for that matter for all of us as a people. What should be done beyond this consistent, committed exposés that Samalokutetoa has been doing over the period with respect to these state lands, when we have institutions being paid to protect these state lands? For example. Thank you very much. I, you're asking me about solutions. You don't want me to, want me to talk about the problems too. Okay, <laughs> well, you, you should. <laughs> you know, I, it's interesting and sometimes revealing and sometimes to it, it gets worrying listening to some of these. What I know is in representative democratic governance, we elect people and then trust into their care a certain fiduciary responsibility. They are supposed to act in a manner responsive to the interests of um, the populace. Now, in order to be able to do, um, to act in our interest, we make life comfortable um, for them. And um, we, so we, do, we want them to sleep well, we, mm -hmm. we want to pay them well, we want to provide them with all the comforts you know, of life so that they can think for us. Mm -hmm. um, in Plato's conception of the philosopher King, he argues um, that we should put in place mechanisms that would make the philosopher king very comfortable. Indeed. So that he would not even be interested in state property. In fact, he goes on to say that the philosopher king must not touch um, a state property and he must not have a property that he can call his own. And all these are done just to make sure that whoever leads us just focuses on thinking for us and doing things in a manner that projects the interest of the people. But unfortunately, it appears that our political elites have all been greedy. Um, since 1992, um, this is it's just that we hadn't, we didn't have an Okuje to a black one who was interested in these matters. But mm. all the political elites have been, you know, guilty about this, especially. So I'm talking about the sale of lands to themselves and then to their cronies to people who are fronting for them. So you see that, they said we, we sold this land to a private person, but you go behind the scenes and you see that it's a politician selling state land to himself. And the processes are such that even if the state's lands are being sold, they are not open to be the ordinary food soldiers or ordinary people of the land. Um, they sell it um, to themselves. But the point is, there are reasons why state lands are acquired. There are reasons why the state must have lands. Indeed. And um, so I, I, I get worried that all of a sudden uh, we want to sell the lands as if then there were no legitimate reasons for the acquisition of such lands. And Sami, as you rightly said, I, I was scandalized when the president, President Akufuadu, hurriedly went to promise Agenda 111 to Ghanaians whilst we were in COVID. I knew that it was just a, a, a talk. And then a, a year or two years afterwards, he came to say that uh, when I promised the land, I didn't know that I, I promised Agenda 111. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to be difficult for me to acquire, um, to get the documentations and to acquire lands, you know, to prosecute that agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like you rightly said, if we truly had state lands and we had not sold to ourselves, then it would have been easier for you to acquire the land, to do whatever you want to do with it. So I am a bit um, worried and disappointed about the way and manner we are selling state lands to ourselves. Okay, If you want to open it, if truly we have to sell state lands, then let us also open it to everybody. But my view is that a land belonging to the state must belong to the state. 
let the you the state use it for the purpose for which it acquired you know those lands and lands that are are are, are shielded or are kept for certain purposes like parks and gardens i was trying to find out this morning why we would leave lands to serve as parks and gardens and you see parks and gardens are expected to provide intrinsic environmental aesthetic and recreational benefits to cities okay they are a source of economic benefits mm -hmm. they enhance property values they increase municipal revenue um, to the state because if it is parks and gardens people will go there for recreation people want to go and see um, some old trees the medicinal values of plants and all that so um, they are areas that are really preserved and also if you have these areas preserved we know how it um, affects the climate uh, the environment and all that so elsewhere we have to when where when the last tree dies the last man will die so elsewhere um, um parks and gardens are preserved i've always said in the university of ghana where i live mm -hmm. okay you cannot cut trees yeah okay even mm -hmm. if it, it has overgrown you need an expert to come in to prune it yourself it is not you cannot just pick a cutlass and be cutting it for firewood we don't do that <laughs> you understand so you yeah. preserve those things but um, i was a bit worried listening to the minister um i he's a friend i'll refer to him as a friend and uh, but I, I i was a bit worried uh, listening to him about the explanation um that the parks and gardens um in wa was sold um i heard him say 2019 um but sami says the documentation says it was sold in 2020 but the reason was simply because um it had be it had become a haven for criminal activities and so because of that it got sold and i said christ me i mean the state has no capacity to deal with criminals and just because it has become a haven for criminal activities suddenly the advantages for keeping parks and gardens are watered down and you want to sell it to somebody to sell fuel i mean with the greatest of respect to the minister i, I think I, I disagree i mean i, I just want to be very mild <laughs> but I, I disagree with that explanation uh, because you cannot choose the sale of petrol over over the environment yeah. Yeah. okay you know mm -hmm. we, we 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 are in an era where we are told that emission of gas fuel gas itself mm -hmm. compromises the environment yeah. And so if we have an environment to be protected and we have a park, parks and gardens to sustain um, this environmental protection, you don't just go sell it simply because there are criminals there. Is it a hopeless situation? The state has no capacity to um, deal with criminals. And so suddenly um, the solution is to sell it um, to somebody to go do fuel uh, filling station there. I think it is absolutely unacceptable. We must begin to say no to the sale of lands um, and then allow the state to own these lands to put up decent structures decent accommodations and where lands are supposed to be preserved mm -hmm. and conserved let those lands be preserved and conserved okay we sell mm -hmm. land to people and you said to private developers and they develop it and no one can buy it yes. yeah. okay they said we are doing affordable housing and you ask yourself, how affordable is uh, no, are the housing projects that are constructed? Indeed. Okay. So why can't we allow, if it is about housing, what we have severe housing deficit. And recently that I had an engagement with Kudu Opong in Chroma, I realized that there were certain things that he, um, he, um, he's, he has on paper um, to do to address the housing deficit. If he's able to do that, mm -hmm. then a housing deficit will be addressed. But the point is that why don't we allow the state to properly put, to get, uh, put up decent housing for ordinary people so that our housing right. deficits are addressed? If you travel elsewhere, one of the things you see to show that a country is developed is the way and manner they have built. 
Okay, and you ask them, they said, well, this, the, um, these were constructed by the state, and they are meant for the ordinary people to rent. Here, we build like we have no sense. We build on water waste. We build such that when there is a fire outbreak, fire hydrants, fire tenders cannot get access to the places where um, the fire outbreaks you know, are occurring. We build in an unstructured manner such that sometimes if you are going to visit somebody, you have to walk through somebody's hall to get to another person's house. That's, that's the way and manner we, we do things. Things are unstructured. And so if you are traveling and you go up there in the sky, you see how, how, how unstructured our housing arrangements are. So why can't we have a state that says that, look, uh, so many people are living in slums. Mm -hmm. We people are living in um, kiosks. People are sleeping on the streets. Let us have decent housing for mm -hmm. all of them. And then people can be renting. And then if you stay in for so many years and you want to buy, ordinary people, ordinary people can buy. Right. I mean, these are some of the things that developing um, countries should be doing. Mm -hmm. Others have done it and they have developed. So I don't see why we shouldn't do so. So I have a plea, the political elite, and I'm very excited that I've heard somewhere in John Mahama's campaign that Tapies is going to, that he's going to institute a public inquiry or something yeah. into yeah. the sale of lands. Yeah. And so let us start from 1992, yeah. okay, yeah. up to now. Yeah. And right. who, those who have illegally acquired, you cannot go and do this in Paul Kagame's um, Rwanda. You see, that man has won elections for the third or uh, third sure. time. Yeah. It's just because of the kinds of things that he's doing. And I'm, sometimes I feel that we need a poor Kagami in Ghana. Okay, let the state go without even being sold. The prison service land was sold in 2005. Um, parks and gardens, the yeah, accantonments was sold in 2016. And so I like the approach that Sami, you took. That even if the lands were sold in 19... Uh, um, in, in you know 20 years ago yeah. even if the lands were sold in 1992 regardless of whoever sold the land i think the way to go is that the sale of public lands mm -hmm. okay in a manner that disregards the purposes for which these lands were acquired should be a no no True. and it is not about it is the NDC that sold it, or it is the MPP that sold it. The point is that if it is not good, it should be regardless of the regime that undertook that transaction. And so I, I think that is, that is what we have to do as a people. And what, what, what at all is about this insatiable and inordinate desire for land? Mm -hmm. Everybody is saying land, 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 land. So you have a lot of land, and so... And, and so what? Yeah. So you can sell and get mm. money. Yeah. You get a lot of money and you do what with it. Uh, you, so you, you, you want to. So let us give you the whole Ghana. Let us construct, build houses <laughs> on the whole of the land space of Ghana and give it to one person. What will you be doing with it? I, I don't know why we have such a greedy... Um, um, perspective to everything I, I, I don't know tomorrow won't you die tomorrow I, I, i'm just asking won't you, indeed look one day my father you don't like me telling you stories right. about my father but you see one day my father's um sister was telling him that look uh, you have to do more properties so that your children will benefit you want to build housing and rent how long will you live